I'm one of the founders of, the, the, of Signature Health, which is now rebranding itself as the Center for Deterrent Depletion. And it's myself, Lazlo Burroughs, Gabar Somalia, and Dr. Ed Cooper. And about three, four years ago, um, we were holding meetings every year with the funding of Quest, which we called, the, the meeting was called Metabolic Therapeutics. And we invited everybody from around the world who were using ketogenic diets and metabolic therapies to come and be rock stars. Then they would talk, the biggest geeks in the world, to come and talk about this diet and how it was going to do all these things. And, and three years ago, Laszlo, who I invited to come, saw me at a, a, at, during the meetings where we were on the, looking at making a new journal, and he said, hey doc, uh, I know how your ketogenic diet works. And if you know any scientists, you know, that's all you have to say to another scientist, I know more than you do. And I said, no, no, you know, come on, buddy. And he convinced me, no, 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 I really do. Come downstairs and I'll explain it to you. He started talking about the deterioration depletion and these hydrogens and these, and these what a hydrogen isotope was um, and how the diet actually worked. And all the work we had put into this on showing how oncogenes turn on and off and how this magical ketones, exogenous ketones, were, was purely serendipity in that it simply was a deuterium depleted diet. It made total sense to me on a cell physiology level. And I saw uh, Dr. Boas lecture and I saw some pre and post scans of patients that were amazing. And uh, then I also experienced the benefits of deuterium depletion on myself physically. We did start a clinic where we, we were treating patients one on one and Pretty soon we realized, this is silly. This is so amazing that we need to share this more than just our local clientele. So we have been up to that. We have been putting programs together and explaining. Before we get to the deuterium first, we have to talk about hydrogen, which is the isotopic pair of deuterium. And hydrogen is practically our, for our life, it's like a computer bit, you know. It's, deuterium does practically everything in our body as far as generating energy or making proteins look a certain way or perform or work in, in certain ways. Hydrogen, which is the smallest atom, is involved in all biochemical or biological processes as the transfer of energy or the transfer of, of a bonding agent, which we know as hydrogen bonds. Uh, deuterium, which is the twice heavy isotopic pair of hydrogen, it actually destroys everything that hydrogen would establish in a biological system. Deuterium is very simple. If you think of all the way your body works, it takes hydrogens from your food and it takes those hydrogens from your food and it puts it into your body into a place called the mitochondria. The mitochondria just think of it as thousands and thousands of these engines that just turn around and they make ATP, make energy, make energy, make energy, make energy, make energy. And that's all they're doing all day. And that's the energy that you actually need to survive. To make it very easy to think about this, you eat about three and a half pounds of food, five pounds of food a day and you make over 170 pounds of ATP, pounds of energy. So you take in much less than your body makes. It's like magic. Well, the whole problem is that there's two different kind of hydrogens. There's a regular hydrogen and there's this twin of hydrogen that's twice as big and twice as heavy. And that one that's twice as heavy, when it gets into those motors, hits it and breaks them. And once they're broken, they can't make energy and they can't even be rebuilt. They've got to be, it's now they've got to be brand new. They can't be repaired. That's the thing we all need to know about deuterium. It's not the devil. And you know, it occurs naturally. We do need deuterium and children and teenagers actually need deuterium. It's what helps them to grow. Uh, inside our bodies, if we get too much of this heavy water, it actually gets very thick and heavy inside our cells and those thousands of tiny motors can't go anymore. They actually break and then you're not able to produce that energy so you can run and play and do all the things you want to do. 
So the solution is very similar. You need to get those heavy hydrogens or the deuterium out of your tissues, your cells, your body. We have one test that's called a determinator that measures both the deuterium that's in your tissues, another one that goes with it which measures the deuterium that's in your saliva or your blood or your tears, which is again, like I said, that where it gets rid of it too. So we got those two and the difference between the tissue and the saliva tells you how, able, how much you're able to deplete it. But in addition to that, we also can take an MRI and with an MRI be able to actually look at your body, the same MRI that you use to see if you have cancer or you use to have a torn muscle and all these things. We have figured out a way to use that same MRI to be able to look at the patterns of deuterium in your body. We can actually even look at deuterium in cholesterol, deuterium in DNA, deuterium in your fingernails, deuterium in your hair. So we can take it apart at, at any level to tell you what's been deuterated and how sick you are, or as Dr. Cooper likes to say, how unwell you are uh, at what point in your life. Deplete your deuterium and then get you better. Fortunately, we have the water, but um, even more fortunately, we can eat foods to deplete our deuterium so that we're not reliant upon consuming the deuterium depleted water forever. It's great in the beginning to give you a kickstart, but learning how to eat in this way, where our body actually makes this water that you're purchasing, you make it inside your own body. And you make it by fats, actually, the more fat that you eat, is actually converted into this deuterium depleted water in our body. So we educate our patients about which fats are the most appropriate to eat. Um, we teach them that green plants, essentially the green plant has the chloroplast, chloroplast which is actually the mitochondria inside our cells. The mitochondria inside of us is so smart, it's always trying to push deuterium away. In fact, it replaces deuterium with regular hydrogens. It has a little re hydrogen recycling plant in there. And every time it sees a deuterium, it's trying to keep it away by putting a regular hydrogen on it. The same with the chloroplast in green plants. It's always pushing the deuterium out and it pushes it towards the fruit. So green plants are low in deuterium. A lot of people, it's good for them to finally learn that fruit may not be so good for you because it's actually very high in deuterium. We can teach them that when your deuterium levels are high, it's important to stay away from the fruit because you're actually adding deuterium into your diet. Once you get it below the level where your own natural mechanisms can deplete it again, it's okay to have some fruit when it's in season, which is what man usually always did. They couldn't eat it all year round. The animals got to it first, the wind got to it first. So they could only eat a little bit of fruit when it was growing on the tree, uh, ripe for a few days of the year. You know, in our last few generations, we have greatly increased the amount of processed foods and um, carbohydrates in general and GMO foods. Our grand great grandparents didn't eat these foods. My great-grandmother lived till 105 and was robust. She did not eat these foods. So we really feel that a lot of the deuterium load has risen in the population due to the foods that we've shifted from eating. They only eat grass-fed animals. But also, we try to also explain to our patients that that's a big contributor, but also in this day and age, it's really not your fault because deuterium is higher in the atmosphere the foods, organic or not, whatever we are eating, are irrigated by um, river water that's likely a high end term. It's not rainwater anymore. So try as you might, it's highly likely that your deuterium levels are high and that's what we have been seeing since our tests were created. Um, so we feel that everybody needs to be tested for deuterium and everybody actually, no matter all the healthy things that they do, they need to take some active measures to lower it into the range where they're not bogged down by deuterium where their cells can function normally, function as they did 10, 20 years ago and you have that energy that you had when you were younger. We find that, you know, and if you see elderly people uh, or sick people that they are breathing uh, more shallow and are having trouble and um, breathing faster and Often it's due to an overload in deuterium. 
So we teach our patients ways to breathe that can actually lower their tutorium. And our scientists, again, are always thinking, what are the things that are contributing to this and what are the ways that we can remove it? So deuterium naturally occurring is in our oceans at about 155 parts per million. So therefore, if you live by the ocean as we do, or if you live in a humid environment and there's certain parts around the world, that you're actually breathing it in. So they have developed a mask that you can wear while you're sleeping or throughout the day. And especially when you're consuming the deuterium depleted water, the air that you exhale will have less deuterium in it than the air in your house. So you'll be taking less in, but you'll also be taking in a little bit of your own CO2 and CO2 tells your hemoglobin to release oxygen to your tissues. So you're going to become more oxygenated and that extra oxygen loves to grab a hold of deuterium and it doesn't release it until you excrete it. Red light or close in this infrared and red range, uh, that's the frequency that resonates with hydrogen. So our body communicates, hydrogen resonance is practically the common language, is the fundamental dictionary of how our body responds to light, how it responds to infections, how it responds to toxins, height response to physical challenges and so on. And light is very important, red light is very important because it can communicate with these hydrogen bonds simply because the resonance range is, is, is actually fitted with this light. This is how um, photosynthesis occurs and this is how our body responds to um, energy that is communicated through light, which is a very important source of energy. It's a very important source of controlling our, our body uh, water's viscosity. And as you know, as close it comes, that water has a very unique state in the mitochondria. It's called interfacial water. It's it's like not really bulk water. It's actually more like surface water, which is very deuterium sensitive meaning that the tomb has multiple effects as far as kinetic isotope effects in interfacial water, which is uh, filling up our intracellular mitochondria uh, as the only water type we find there. So red light and light resonance, which actually talks or communicates with our um, water hydrogen uh, oxygen oxygen hydrogen bonds and some other uh, hydrogen bonds in our in our body that's practically the resonance range that can help our body to produce energy more efficiently because it actually decreases lots viscosity or uh, water's viscosity and because of that we function better if you are exposed to to light um, in particular, if you are exposed to red light. So synthetic supplements are like synthetic food, and we're always very amazed how people talk about processed foods being bad, but they can't make the connection with processed vitamins and minerals if it's from a natural source that's a plant-based source and it's been processed correctly those are low deuterium and the things that you're trying to bring into them are proper or have the right proteins and carb structures and so that's fine that's fine if you need them S synthetic supplements have a high level deuterium in them because of one of two things one they're made of tap water and tap water has high deuterium levels in it, anywhere from 100, and depending on where it is in the world, from 147 to 155. Or they use hydrogens, just like when you make hydro hydrogenated oil, you take hydrogens from hydrogen gas and you blow it on to the ingredients that you have. That hydrogens from the hydrogenated gas that you use are really the deuterium, because deuterium is heavy, and easier to get and process, it's cheaper. And so you're actually adding on to this supplement 
high deuterium amounts. Not just some deuterium, but it could have as much as 200 or 220 parts per million more than it's even natural on Earth. So supplements, we're agnostic about it. As long as it doesn't raise your deuterium levels, we don't see any, any problem with a person taking it, unless these are supplements when you're doing deuterium depletion that act on the mitochondria, like CoQ. If they act on the mitochondria, then our body, the way your body works is, if, you're, if you give the body something it's supposed to make, it's not going to make it. So if you give it CoQ, which is this thing that's gonna help you make ATP, it's not going to make its own CoQ, and it's not gonna make as much energy. So you get a short-term return, and then long-term, it hurts you. So when it comes to supplements, we say look first before you leap, uh, and to go with natural versus synthetic supplements, and not to go with supplements that are actually going to decrease you from doing what your body is supposed to do naturally. Red light interferes with hydrogen bonds. It can resonate hydrogens faster. It can communicate to mo energy with molecules that have hydrogens, atoms bound to oxygen, carbons, or nitrogen. And, but blue light has no resonance interference with hydrogen bonds. So blue light does not affect hydrogen bonds directly. Blue light has many other biological effects. Actually, plants filter out blue light just as well as they filter out red light because it's part of photosynthesis. They, they use the high energy of the blue light range to actually produce organic molecules. And there is a protein that is specializing in plants um, to actually capture blue light and use its energetic forces to create organic bonds or, or covalent bonds in, in plants. This is why gr plants are green because the red and the blue components are missing. Because blue light is important but it has a different biological role. And that's practically because it's high energy, it participates in um, photosynthesis directly. And in the human body, it actually communicates energy in a certain way of certain synthetic processes, yet those are an entire field of biochemical investigations of how blue light interferes with certain biochemical reactions, but it has no direct role in hydrogen deuterium resonance um, for um, changing or altering uh, water viscosity and interfering with energy production directly in, in, in uh, living cells. We really are functional medicine. We are the basic functional medicine. That's a, a word that's thrown around, a term that's thrown around a lot. But what that means is what does your body, how does your body function and what does it need to function the way it, way it does. Deuterium depletion and getting the right hydrogens in the right place is the basis of all functional medicine. Because once you have those deuterium levels down, not only do you start to make the, enough cellular energy to correct your body, but you also start to make the right shape biomolecules for your body to build new muscles, to build new brain cells, to, to, to have better enzymes. It builds all the right things. And once you have the right things in place, there's no need for supplements because your body does it. For instance, somebody asked me a question earlier today, and that was about, um, really about wasting, about what, adding vitamins in. Well, you don't need to have vitamins added in and minerals added in because once your body is tuned up and ready to go like a, a fine-tuned Ferrari, it doesn't waste anything. And so you don't have to take vitamins. You don't have to take supplements. As a matter of fact, taking vitamins and supplements is a sign that you're not well, so, and that you're not healthy. <laughs>